So you want to drive the Ultra Shift HV? Well, that's why we're here. Over the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at the components you'll be using, proper startup, selecting a starting gear, normal driving operations, and proper shutdown procedures. We'll also answer some of the most frequently asked questions we receive at the end of this program. And what we don't cover in this video, you'll find detailed in your driver's instruction manual. In fact, we recommend you read through the manual before you drive the Ultra Shift HV, just to be sure you're thoroughly familiar with what you've got working for you. So, let's get started. Now, there are two key Ultra Shift components in the cab. A gear display, which will display the gear you're in and the gear you're moving to. The gear display is also used to alert the driver when clutch abuse is being detected. We'll go over what to do if this is observed later in this program. And a shifter to select different operating modes. Eaton offers two shifters, a lever and a push button panel. The following information is related to the standard Ultra Shift HV models. We will discuss the optional models with Park Paul in a moment. The shifter has five modes, reverse, neutral, drive, manual, and low. There are also up and down arrows, which we'll discuss in a few minutes, and a service light, which may alert you in the event of a potential transmission problem or service need. Now, different OEMs may provide their own shifters and gear displays, but their functions are the same. If you're not using Eaton design components, just be sure to refer to your vehicle manual for instructions on the location and use of the OEM supplied components. The Ultra Shift HV is also available with an optional park pawl, which ensures the vehicle won't move when put in the park position. The park pawl provides secondary backup to the vehicle's foundation braking system. These models require an OEM supplied shifter, which replaces the standard push button shift console. If you have questions about this shifter, please contact the OEM. There are five operating modes, park, reverse, neutral, drive, hold, and first or low mode. The hold feature will hold a gear for continuous operation in that gear, such as on grades. The gear display will show a P for park, R for reverse, N for neutral, D1 through D6 for the appropriate gear you are driving in, H1 to H6 for the gear you are holding, and a 1 for the low mode. Now let's take Ultra Shift HV out on the road. As with any vehicle, be sure to use proper safety procedures. Buckle up and be sure the parking or spring brake is set. You'll also want to be sure the shifter is in neutral, and I'll tell you why that's especially important in a few minutes. Turn the key to the on position. At power up, Ultra Shift will go through a self test. Until the self test is complete, the engine will not crank. You'll notice that the service light comes on and goes off, and the gear display shows a solid N, indicating that the Ultra Shift HV has registered that you're in neutral. If the service light remains lit or the gear display shows a dash, Ultra Shift has not confirmed neutral. We'll go over what to do in that case a little later in this program. Assuming you've achieved normal power up, a solid N on the gear display, just start the engine. Now the process of selecting a starting gear is the same whether you select reverse, drive, manual, or low mode. First, apply your service brakes and select a mode. Then release the vehicle parking brakes. The gear display will flash the gear you're going to. Once the gear is engaged, it will stop flashing and become a solid display. If you selected drive or manual, the Ultra Shift HV will only allow you to start in first gear. All right, when your gear display is solid with the gear you want, slowly release the service brakes and apply the accelerator, and you're on your way. If you've selected drive, Ultra Shift will automatically upshift or downshift. During the shifts, the gear display will flash the gear you're going to, and when you're in gear, the display will become solid with the new gear. One note, in drive, Ultra Shift will adapt to the changing conditions of the vehicle. But right after power up or after changing loads, Ultra Shift needs to learn the new conditions. 
While learning, it may hold a gear instead of upshifting. Simply push the up button to start the upshift. It may take three or four shifts for UltraShift to learn the new conditions. After that, it will perform upshifts and downshifts automatically. Also, when coasting to a stop in the lower gears, UltraShift won't finish downshifting until the driver gets back on the throttle or the vehicle is nearly stopped. This is normal for the UltraShift HV. Now let's take a look at manual mode. When manual is selected, whether you're moving or at a stop, UltraShift doesn't shift under normal conditions unless you use the up and down arrows on the shifter. In other words, as you accelerate and decelerate, press the up or down arrow to request a shift. Please note, if stopped, the UltraShift HV will go back into first gear. If a shift can't be completed due to engine RPM and road speed, the shifter will signal a tone, telling you that it can't complete the requested shift. Low mode. Just like manual, low mode can be selected at any speed or at a stop. If you selected low gear from a stop, the Ultra Shift will engage and maintain first gear. Selecting low while moving when driving down long grades or when coming to a stop will optimize engine braking by initiating downshifts at higher RPMs and, under normal conditions, inhibiting upshifts. Now let's recap this information. Remember that any of your modes, drive, manual, or low, can be selected at any speed or from a stop. So if you started out in low and want to upshift, simply select manual and use the buttons to shift. Or select drive and let ultra shift shift automatically. If you're in drive and want to take over the shifting, select manual and use the up or down buttons to shift. Hill Assist. The UltraShift is equipped with a hill assist feature. While the operator makes the transition from the brake pedal to the accelerator pedal, this feature automatically minimizes roll back and roll forward on grades from 3% to 10%. Let's move on to reverse mode. You should keep in mind that in order to engage reverse gear, you should be at a stop or moving at less than 2 miles per hour. Selecting Reverse from Neutral will engage Reverse and an R will appear on the gear display. Just as with Drive, Manual or Low, the gear display will flash the gear you're going to. Once the gear is engaged, it will become a solid display. Now let's talk about clutch protection. As mentioned earlier, the UltraShift HV transmission is not intended to provide hill hold capability by slipping the clutch. The service brakes must be used to stop and hold the vehicle on an incline. Even though an UltraShift HV equipped vehicle does not have a clutch pedal, it still has a mechanical clutch. As you slowly increase and decrease engine RPM from a stop, the clutch is engaging and disengaging, just like slipping the clutch with a manual transmission. If the vehicle is operated for long periods between engine idle and 1000 RPM during launch, the driver is slipping the clutch, which, in turn, makes the clutch hot. If the clutch starts to get too hot, a warning tone will sound, and a C and then an A will flash on the gear display, signifying clutch abuse. This is an indication that the driver is abusing the clutch and it is getting too hot to operate, potentially resulting in a failure. If a C and then an A shows on the gear display during vehicle operation, stop the vehicle for at least two minutes and let the clutch cool down. Continuing operation with the C and A flashing on the gear display will cause the clutch to become even hotter. The transmission may attempt to downshift into a lower start gear and or limit the engine to idle speed until the clutch cools, approximately three minutes. Repeated incidents of clutch abuse may cause the clutch to fail and render the truck immobile, resulting in extended downtime.